Hi guys, Adam here. I'm going to create a series of videos here, just three or four. They're going to be really long, um, but they're going to be the most beneficial videos that you ever watch in succession um, relating to Excel. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a full blown out team dashboard from scratch. And all I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to go over the data set and kind of what we need to do to accomplish that and some steps we need to take before we start. So we have all of our athletes or code names right here. We have a date. And within those days, this is a class. So within the class, we have whether or not the athlete or the code name attended class, whether or not the attendance was excused. And then more for the sports science side of things, we have daily uh, stress levels from zero to 10, sleep quality, zero to 10, energy, zero to 10. In each of these metrics, the higher is better. Then we have injury status, where you can be full limited or out, whether or not the individual exercised in the past 24 hours, the RPE of that exercise session, the duration of that exercise session, performance, which we don't have to worry about. Then we ask a question of the day, and there's a question of the day answer, which again, we don't have to worry about. Then there's attended but did not complete their data. So that's when someone was in class but did not fill out their data. And then we have a couple of calculations that we already did in this table, such as a readiness score, where we just added up the stress, sleep quality, and energy to have an aggregated score of overall readiness. And we also calculated SRPE, which is the latest RPE times the latest duration. Then we have a column called ones that'll serve us well later, and then an academic year in case that um, another year comes along and we have different um, students, then we can compile data and look on year after year averages. I wrote a formula um, to define the start and end dates, um, which go into that year. Now, what happens in sport and, and often, oftentimes pretty much anywhere, you don't just have one data set that you're working with, you have multiple. So I created a fake performance data set. And the difference is that this performance data set is something that's collected once every so often, whereas this is completed every single day. So it doesn't really make sense to track performance in a spreadsheet that we're collecting information on every single day when performance might only be assessed tw twice or three times a year. So you'll notice there are a couple dates in here. I think that there are four total dates. Oh, well, that's harder to see than I, than I thought. Yep, so four total assessments. And I just randomized grades from 75 to 100 for each of those assess assessments, which are indicators of performance. And the point here is to get the performance data to display alongside this daily data, we're gonna have to do some things. And then a third layer is profile. So it doesn't really make sense. If, let's imagine you had height, weight. Uh, these things don't change, like height, weight, position, um, body type, all these different things that really aren't going to change. And they're part of a person's profile, house, uh, house number, phone number, things like that. This is another data set that we'll work with and could potentially use to organize our information. So the cohort of interest, this is the cohort that you told me you were most interested in working with. This could very well be position. And then when you look at positional breakdowns, that may have meaning in sports science. Just like if we break down the information by cohort of interest, that may have meaning to us. And then I did what I said that I would do in, in previous videos. This is a step that everyone should take. I planned out exactly what I want the dashboard to look like and how I want it to work. And I'm gonna go by this, go through this one by one. First, I want there to be a date picker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a date and this is a daily team report. So all of the information in this report, mostly, is going to be filtered down to that date so that we're looking at one date in question. But then I have a past X days selector also where Instead of just showing the information from this day, maybe on this day, I want to show an aggregate of information where, for example, I could get your RPE for today, but maybe on this day, I want to get your average RPE over the past seven days or 14 days. So we're still looking at today, 
but the metric may be aggregated in a different way. That's where this selector comes in. I would type a number into a box and the information would filter um, and we'd be able to look at aggregates in that way. And then I have a group filter, which is this, the cohort of interest. That's my group. Um, this is gonna be used with a slicer and I'll talk about those later where I can pick a group and then this table of athletes where there will be athletes here, metrics across the top so that we can see the results for each individual athlete and then group averages below. We can filter down this table by selecting a group or multiple groups. And then the same thing applies here where there's gonna be an athlete filter where I can just pick a few select athletes and this table will filter down to those athletes that I might wanna hone in on. So those are my filters. After that, we have general information about this day for the cohort as a whole. The class attendance, maybe the percent of the people are here that are here, the class injury status, the percent of the people that are full. Beneath each of those things are year average percentages so that we can kind of compare um, what today was like versus the average. And you can look at the rest of the things and the same concept applies to the class wellness, exercise percentage, and SRPE. And then my plan is to put in some text-driven logic based on what we see here. It may say something like, let's say that our attendance was 100% today, but the year average is 90%. The text logic may say, based on a formula that I write, awesome, you were your class was 10%. Uh, had a 10% higher attendance than it did than it does on average, or it, it's just putting text to what's going on numerically. That didn't really make sense, but that's what the text logic boxes are for. Then I have headers to the table, and the table that I talked about, group averages beneath the table, and then on the bottom I'm going to have a graph, and it's going to compare load and wellness, or and Load can be a couple different things. It could be the duration of exercise. It could be the SRPE. It could be just the RPE. Wellness could also be a couple things. It could be sleep quality. It could be energy. It could perhaps be attendance. It could be the readiness score. And so we're going to give the opportunity within this graph to pick load and wellness um, to examine the relationships that we want in the graph. And we can dynamically change those things. And I also want a group picker for this graph. So if I just want to look at the group that works with athletes, or if you think of it as a position, let's say the, the running back position, then I can filter down this report and just look at the averages for running backs and how they correspond to one another over time. That's an important note too. The x-axis will be time over a specified number of days. So that's what we're going to build together. And now that you understand the data, and everything uh, alongside it and what the plan is. The next couple of videos, we're gonna go literally right into this thing and build it out. It's gonna take a little while. It's gonna be really fun though. And there are gonna be a lot of little components that you're gonna learn a lot from. So I'll see you in uh, video one when we start to build this thing.